This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. I'm KJ Wright from the Seattle Seahawks, and you are watching Norb Cam. What's up, everybody? This is Norb Cam coming at you. Game day today, but a quick uh, little news update. Norb Cam news style uh, as we get ready to take on the Tennessee Titans in preseason game number two. My name is Norb Kawili. Norb Cam, if you're new here, would love it if you would subscribe and follow me here on YouTube. I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, also, a special shout out to my sponsor, Bet US Sportsbook and Casino. All right, let's get into it. Five things to watch for in this Seahawks-Titans matchup. So first, uh, I just want to start by saying, you know, the uh, when it comes to preseason, you can't read too much into it, especially when it comes to the score and the result, because the score never really tells you much at all. And you're never really as bad as you may look when the score is over, and you're not necessarily as good as you look either. I remember, I think it was um, Jim Mora who took over the Seahawks in 2009, I think he went undefeated in preseason, and then the regular season record was 5-11 and 11 or something like that. So never can read much in the preseason, but there are some things to look for. Uh, so here are the five things that was worth checking out. All right, so uh, number one is definitely the trenches. All right, so offensive line, defensive line, you know, it's so easy to just follow where the ball goes and see what the action is. But really what the fun part, especially in preseason, is to watch what are the what is the offensive line doing? Because you can really get a sense as to the depth, the different positions. A lot of the starters will be playing at certain positions, and those are competing at certain positions. So it's kind of fun to see what those guys are doing up front because ultimately the game, the team is going to ride and die based on what happens in the trenches. Now, during this week, the Seahawks and the Titans had a joint practice. The first one they've had, uh, in since 1991 when they had a joint practice with the Atlanta Falcons, something Pete Carroll never really believed in doing. So this was kind of an, a new opportunity for the Seahawks to see uh, what they look like in game speed. And I think it was also smart of Mike McDonald to not only have some, you know, unfamiliar competition, but also to kind of experience that whole game preparation uh, going against a team that they're going to see here today but also trying to game plan from what they saw at practice and also just to have more game speed type of action. And I think it, from what, everything I've heard for, for, heard from with all the different Seahawks media people, Greg Bell of Seattle, Tacoma News uh, Tribune, uh, does a great job and get a lot of information from him. Sounds like it was a very spirited, very good practice uh, for the Seahawks. All right, so in the trenches, some things to look for. Uh, Christian Haynes, uh, apparently at right guard, had a hell of a job, a hell of a practice, kind of going against the Tennessee Titans ones. And this is one thing we won't see in the game today. We're going to see mostly backup, but during this closed practice where people weren't allowed to watch, they had ones versus ones. So we were really kind of, they were really seeing more of that true uh, battle between the starters in this closed practice. Another thing that you don't get to do during preseason. And Christian Haynes filled in and did pretty good at right guard. So this, we'll see if he gets any play time today. Uh, but it's great to see the rookie stepping up and uh, making big progress. Uh, center is another intriguing position right now on the offensive line. Uh, we had Oluwatimi <clears throat> was kind of was drafted last year, didn't play much. Then they got Nick Harris, and then they brought in Connor Williams. Now, Connor Williams is definitely one of the most uh, highly rated centers in the league came, coming from the Dolphins, but he's recovering from a ACL injury from eight months ago. And so he's got, you know, a time not working on his side, both from a physical standpoint, but also he just came in not more than two weeks ago. And so he's got to learn the whole playbook, gel with the offensive line, and he's got two games to do it. And I don't even know if he's going to be playing yet. So it'll be interesting to see. Eventually, I think he will be the starter, uh, hopefully by week one. But he's got a lot of preparation to do in a very short amount of time. So it'll be interesting to see how the Seahawks play the center role during these next two critical preseason games. Uh, Oluwatimi was in there. And I actually thought he did a pretty good job in, in pass protection. I didn't see a whole lot of pressure coming from the center position. And run... Def uh, run blocking, maybe not his strength, but definitely that was one of his strengths coming out of college is that he was one of the best protectors in, in passing. So uh, I thought he did a pretty decent job. 
Um, but we'll kind of keep an eyeball on that and see how the center position looks as this game plays out. Another concern is right tackle. Uh, I think we all know left tackle is pretty set uh, with Charles Cross. Uh, right tackle, you know, Abe Lucas is still out with that nagging knee injury. So George Fant's not really playing right now. McClendon Curtis, who's listed as a guard, actually played some right tackle in that the last game against the Chargers. And oof, he got beat a few times, uh, gave up some near sacks there. Uh, so uh, that makes me a little nervous what they do at right tackle. So keep an eye on the right tackle spot as well. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, let's go to uh, number two. Actually, uh, another note on the def- or on the, uh, and I'll get to defense in a second. So number two, uh, the running back position. We all know Ken Walker Jr. Uh, is going to, K-9 is going to be the guy. With Zach Charbonnet at number two. Charbonnet was getting some touches against the Chargers. Looked pretty good doing it. But the most intriguing spot is the third and fourth back position. Kenny McIntosh, drafted last year out of Georgia, he was a player that I think we were, a lot of people were excited to see what he could do. And I think he had some injury issues. Really didn't get to play much except some special teams. But he's definitely getting some touches during this preseason. And ran the ball pretty decently. Uh, in the preseason game, but George Halani really uh, kind of showed up and you know scored a touchdown, made some pretty good runs as well. So it's going to be a pretty good, interesting battle between those two for the third running back position. So let's keep an eye and see who stands out in that spot. Staying on the offense, uh, number three to watch out for the receiver battle, kind of like the running back battle. We kind of know who the top one, two, three are. Uh, we know that's going to be uh, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. Uh, JSN definitely got some touches and made some nice plays in preseason, but it's that fourth and fifth wide receiver battle that's going to be very intriguing. Jake Bobo uh, has been a player that I think we all want to see more from. He's been having a great practice, uh, a great off uh, training camp, just with some amazing uh, routes, catches, scored a touchdown in the mock game back at Lumen Field a couple weekends ago, uh, and continues to make some great plays. And the dude can ball. I mean, the guy goes up and gets that ball, and it's a, it's, it's a hell of a fun uh, time to watch. So keep an eye with uh, Jake Boba. I think he's kind of got that fourth spot, definitely is the, the, the leader. But we saw some plays from uh, LaVisca Chenault, uh, Aesop Winston Jr., Derek Young also making plays. So we definitely got a plethora and an uh, embarrassment of riches when it comes to uh, uh, wide receivers. So someone's going to have to get cut, and it'll be interesting to see who does because we got a lot of talent there. D. Eskridge, of course. Uh, getting some touches as well. I see him and Chenault kind of doing a lot of uh, return game stuff, especially with this modified kickoff rule. Um, the uh, Just the amount of times now that returns are actually happening. While the kickoff, the new kickoff formation is weird to watch to me, I don't, I still wish we'd go back to the old ways, but we're not, so I got to get used to the new ways. It's like a glitch when the ball's kicked. Nobody's moving, right? I was standing still as the ball waits, and all of a sudden, pew, they come to life. But it's definitely enhanced the returns. We're definitely seeing more returns than we did in, in recent years, so that's a good thing. And it's kind of new. Nobody really knows how to quite strategize the best way to, to do this. At least we're not seeing it right now. So we're, getting, we're seeing some pretty big pretty big returns out to like the 40 yard line plus. So this might enhance the positions for guys like Eskridge and Chenault who have some speed and can maybe make a name for themselves once again when it comes to kickoffs. All right, number four, uh, we go to the defense side of the ball, the stacked secondary, watching the competition there. Uh, of course, Devin Witherspoon also having a great camp. He's definitely number one corner. Uh, Reek Woolen uh, had a good preseason game against the Chargers, a couple breakups, should have had an interception, went right through his hands. Um, but it's nice to just see him back to his kind of normal self again. I, I know he was dealing with a nagging knee injury last year, and so there was a bit of, uh, of a a sophomore slump for him. So hopefully in this third year, uh, he can rise back to that uh, season he had in the first year where he was amazing. Had a bunch of picks. Would love to see him and Witherspoon just being like two lockdown guys of uh, what we always dreamed of that we wanted to have last year. So let's we'll see if they can put that together. Uh, but then we again, we have just as many corners as we, as we do receivers. Uh, we got Artie Burns, Michael Jackson, DJ James, and Nehemiah Pritchett, the rookies. Um, and so these guys are all competing uh, for various spots, and we're only going to be able to keep so many. So let's keep an eye on that and let's see uh, what uh, these guys can do in these next two opportunities. It's tough to always watch. It's tough to watch the corners come on TV. You, you never see them. They're all downfield, so you only see the end result. You don't know how it got to be that way. And so unless you watch the all 22, it's really hard to kind of see exactly what they're doing. Sometimes they'll show a replay, and you can see what, you know, how they gave up or they did they miss, uh, they get, get juked out, and that's how they miss coverage or it's hard to really know until you see the end result. So 
But it's nonetheless interesting uh, competition to watch for. Um, safety, Rayshon Jenkins. I just want to say that. Uh, listen to this guy. I, re- I didn't know that much about him, but he you know came over in the off season and uh, really loved this interview. This guy just was uh, was a, he's a smart guy. He said everything you like to say. Like I remember one of the best interviews I ever heard was Tyler Lockett in the beginning of his rookie season. I thought, man, if this guy can play like he can talk. This dude's going to be awesome, and he certainly was. And Rayshon Jenkins, I, I feel the same way. Just everything he said. But he actually said something that most uh, athletes don't talk about, which is the fact that Washington State doesn't have a state income tax. So when you're making that kind of money, uh, you're saving a lot of money not having to be double taxed. And he actually brought that up. So I thought it was pretty smart that it's not brought up enough because that's a pretty big deal when you're making millions of dollars. Uh, all right, before I get to number five, I just got a shout out to my sponsor again, Bet US Sportsbook and Casino. Uh, Bet US. Uh, is offering currently a 125% deposit match on your first three deposits up to $2,000. So what that means is that if you deposit 100 bucks, they're going to throw an extra $125 on top of that to play with. So pretty good to play with house money. So check it out. I got a link in the description. Uh, Bet US Sportsbook and Casino. All right. And I'm just going to uh, throw a little ad to uh, my buddy here, a former quarterback, who's going to talk quickly about it. Bet US Sports. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance. Bet US, my online sports book and casino. All right. Thank you, Michael. All right. So to wrap it up, we're going to number five. And that is, this is just for fun, uh, the trash talking. Obviously, with. Uh, Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams now on the Titans. There was some spirited trash talking going on during the practice. Uh, Jamal Adams been doing most of the talking, but Devin Witherspoon getting into it as well. But this thing, thing kind of happened in that practice. Uh, we got video of it where Devin Witherspoon interview, uh, intercepted uh, Will Levis and took it to the house. And he not just took it to the house, he took it to Jamal Adams. Here we go. Here's the clip. And there's Jamal Adams there. He's laughing. This one picks it, gives it to Jamal. They have a good time with it. I love it, man. It's all good. You know, they're all laughing about it, you know, from friendly trash talk. So expect to see some of that in this game for sure. But uh, pretty funny to see. You know, you, you gotta, if you're going to dish it out, you got to take it too. So uh, expect to see maybe a little bit of that if, they're, if those guys uh, end up on the field together um, playing in the starter's position. I don't know if they will, but... It'll be fun to watch if they are. Nonetheless, I'm sure they'll be, they'll be trash talking from the sidelines. Um, that is pretty much it. So those are the five things to look for as we watch the Seahawks-Titans game, preseason game number two. I will be live streaming that game live at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So come join my live stream as we watch this second game. First live stream of, of the year for the 2024 Seahawks. Uh, looking forward to it. So... Again, thanks to my sponsor, Bet US Sportsbook and Casino. And remember, if you do indulge in the action, just remember to please gamble responsibly. All right, we'll see you guys at the live stream and the next video. Take care and go Hawks, baby. <laughs>